हेलो स्टूडेंट्स होप ऑल ऑफ यू आर फाइन दिस इज योर इंग्लिश लेसन एंड टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी यूनिट नंबर ट्वेल्व फ्रॉम ऑक्सफोर्ड रीडिंग सर्कल बुक एट दिस इज सेकेंड एडिशन एंड द नेम ऑफ द चैप्टर इज द मोक टर्टल्स स्टोरी स्टूडेंट्स द मोक टर्टल्स स्टोरी इज अ स्टोरी about alice and her adventures in her wonderland in her dreams she meets strange creatures including a griffin and a mock turtle let's read the story together alice is in the garden with the duchess you will meet a strange queen and other strange characters too in this make believe world you can't think how glad i am to see you again you dear old thing said the duchess as they walked off together alice was very glad to find her in such a pleasant temper and thought to herself that perhaps it was only the pepper that had made her so savage when they met in the kitchen savage means of an animal or force of nature violent furious when i am a duchess she said to herself not in a very hopeful tone though i won't have any pepper in my kitchen at all soup does very well without maybe it's always pepper that makes people hot tempered she went on very much pleased at having found out a new kind of rule and vinegar that makes them sour and chamomile kemam, chamomile that makes them bitter and and barley sugar and such things that make children sweet tempered i only wish people knew that then they wouldn't be so stingy about it you know she had quite forgotten the duchess by this time and was a little startled when she heard her voice close to her ear you are thinking about something my dear and that makes you forget to talk i can't tell you just now what the moral of that is but i shall remember it in a bit perhaps it hasn't once alice ventured to remark ventured undertake a risky or daring journey tit tit child said the duchess everything's got a moral if only you can find it and she squeezed herself up closer to alice's side as she spoke alice did not like her keeping so close to her because the duchess was very ugly however she did not like to be rude so she bore it as well as she could the game's going on rather better now she said by way of keeping up the conversation a little tis so said the duchess and the moral of that is oh tis love tis love that makes the world go round somebody said alice whispered that it's done by everybody minding their own business ah well it means much the same thing said the duchess and the moral of that is take care of the sense and the sounds will take care of themselves how fond she is of finding morals and things alice thought to herself i dare say you are wondering why i don't put my arm round your waist the duchess said after a pause the reason is that i am doubtful about the temper of your flamingo shall i try the experiment he might bite alice cautiously replied cautiously in a careful and well considered way not feeling at all analogous to have the experiment tried 
Very true, said the Duchess. Flamingos and mustard both bite. And the moral of that is birds of a feather flock together. Only mustard isn't a bird, Alice remarked. Right, as usual, said the Duchess. What a clear way you have of putting things. It's a mineral, I think, said Alice. Of course it is, said the Duchess. She seemed ready to agree to everything that Alice said. There's a large mustard mine near here, and the moral of that is, the more there is of mine, the less there is of yours. Oh, I know, exclaimed Alice, who had not attended to this last remark. It's a vegetable. It doesn't look like one. But it is. I quite agree with you, said the Duchess, and the moral of that is, be what you would seem to be, or if you'd like it, put more simply. Never imagine yourself not to be otherwise than what it might appear to others, that what you were or might have been was not otherwise than what you had been would have appeared to them to be otherwise. I think I should can understand that better, Alice said very politely, if I had it written down, but I can't quite follow it as you say it. That's nothing to what I could say if I chose, the Duchess replied in a pleased tone. Pray, don't trouble yourself. Pray. Don't trouble yourself means that you should pray for the better situation and better circumstances and don't put yourself in difficult uh, situations. Pray don't trouble yourself to say it any longer than that, said Alice. Oh, don't talk about trouble, said the Duchess. I will make you a present of everything I have said as yet. A cheap sort of present, thought Alice. I'm glad people don't give birthday presents like that. But she did not venture to say it out loud. Thinking again? The Duchess asked. I have a right to think, said Alice sharply, for she was beginning to feel a little worried. Just about as much right, said the Duchess. As horses have no fly and... Mm, but here, to Alice's great surprise, the Duchess was tied away, even in the middle of her favorite word moral, and the arm that was linked into hers began to tremble. Alice looked up, and there stood the queen in front of them, with her arms folded, frowning like a thunderstorm. A fine day, your majesty, the Duchess began in a low, weak voice. Now I give you fair warning shouted the queen stamping on the ground as she spoke either you or your head must be off head must be off means to be crazy and that in about half the time take your choice the duchess took her choice and was gone in a moment let's go on with the game the queen said to alice and alice was much too frightened to say a word but slowly followed her back to the croquet ground. Students, croquet is an outdoor game in which the players use mallets to drive a wooden ball through a series of hoops placed in the ground. The other guests had taken advantage of the queen's absence and were resting in the shade. However, the moment they saw her, they hurried back to the game, the queen merely remarking that a moment's delay would cost them their lives. All the time they were playing, the queen never left off quarreling over the other players and shouting off with his head or off with her head. Those whom she sentenced were taken into custody by the soldiers who of course, had to leave off being arches to do this. Here, arches means a curved structure 
so that by the end of half an hour or so there were no arches left and all the players except the king the queen and alice were in custody and under sentence of execution here executions means the carrying out of a plan then the queen left off quite out of breath and said to alice have you seen the mock turtle yet no said alice i don't even know what a mock turtle is it's the thing mock turtle soup is made from said the queen i never saw one or heard of one said alice come on then said the queen and he shall tell you his history as they walked off together alice heard the king say in a low voice to the company generally you are all pardoned pardon here means forgive or excuse come that's good thing she said to herself for she had felt quite unhappy at the number of executions the queen had ordered they were they very soon came upon a griffin griffin here means a um, mythical creature with the head and wings of an eagle and the body of a lion lying fast asleep in the sun if you don't know what a griffin is look at the picture a lazy thing said the queen and take this young lady to see the mock turtle and to hear his history i must go back and see after some executions i have ordered and she walked off leaving alice alone with the griffin alice did not quite like the look of the creature but on the whole she thought it would be quite as safe to stay with it as to go after that savage queen so she waited the griffin sat up and rubbed its eyes then it watched the queen till she was out of sight then it chuckled chuckled means laugh quietly or in wordly what fun said the griffin half to itself half to alice what is the fun said alice why she said the griffin it's all her fancy that they never executes nobody you know come on everybody says come on here thought alice as she went slowly after it i never was so ordered about before in all my life never they had not gone far before they saw the mock turtle in the distance sitting sad and lonely on a little ledge of rock ledge is an underwater ridge especially of rocks beneath the sea near the shore and as they came nearer alice could hear him sighing as if his heart would break she pitied him deeply what is his sorrow she asked the griffin and the griffin answered very nearly in the same words as before it's all his fancy that he hasn't got no sorrow she know come on so they went up to the mock turtle who looked at them with large eyes full of tears but said nothing this your young lady said the griffin she wants for to know your your history she do i'll tell it her said the mock turtle in a deep hollow tone sit down both of you and don't speak a word till i have finished so they sat down and nobody spoke for some minutes alice thought to herself i don't see how he can ever finish if he doesn't begin but she waited patiently once said the mock turtle at last at last with a deep sir i was a real turtle these words were followed by a very long silence broken only by an occasional exclamation of h j c k double r h from the griffin and the constant heavy sobbing of the mock turtle alice was very nearly getting up and saying thank you sir for your interesting story 
but she could not help thinking there must be more to come so she sat still and said nothing when we were little the mock turtle went on at last more calmly though still sobbing a little now and then we went to school in the sea the master was an old turtle we used to call him tortoise why did you call him tortoise if he wasn't one alice asked we called him tortoise because he thought us he taught us said the mock turtle angrily really you are very dull you ought to be ashamed of yourself for asking such a simple question added the griffin and then they both sat silent and looked at poor alice who felt ready to sink into the earth the griffin said to the mock turtle drive on old fellow don't be all day about it and he went on in these words yes we went to school in the sea though you may not believe it i never said i didn't interrupted alice you did said the mock turtle hold your tongue added the griffin before alice could speak again the mock turtle went on we had the best of educations in fact we went to school every day i have been to a day school too said alice you need not be so proud as all that with extras asked the mock asked the mock turtle a little anxiously yes said alice we learned french and music and washing said the mock turtle certainly not said alice indignant indignantly here indignantly means in a manner indicating anger or annoyance at something or somebody ah oh, then yours wasn't a really good school said the mock turtle in a tone of great relief now at ours they had at the end of the bell french music and washing extra you couldn't have wanted it much said alice living at the bottom of the sea i couldn't afford to learn it said the mock turtle with a sir i only took the regular course what was that inquired alice reeling and writing of course to begin with the mock turtle replied and then the different branches of arithmetic ambition distraction uglification and derision derision sorry derision means joke i never heard of uglification uglification means to make or become ugly or more ugly alice ventured to say what is it the griffin lifted up both its paws in surprise never heard of uglifying it exclaimed you know what to beautify is i suppose yes said alice doubtfully it means to make anything prettier well then the griffin went on if you don't don't know what to uglify is you are a simpleton simpleton means a person without the usual ability to use reason and understand alice did not feel encouraged to ask any more questions about it so she turned to the mock turtle and said what else had you to learn well there was mystery the mock turtle replied counting of the subjects on his flappers mystery ancients ancient and modern with geography then drawing the drawing master was an old congreel that used to come once a week he he taught us drawing stretching and fending in quilts what was that like said alice well i can't show it to you myself the mock turtle said i'm too stiff and the griffin never learned it hadn't time said the griffin i went to the classical master though he was an old crab he was i never went to him the mock turtle said with a sir he taught laughing and grief they used to say so he did 
so he did said the griffin signing him in his turn and both creatures hid their faces in their paws and how many hours a day did you do lessons said alice in a hurry to change the subject ten hours the first day said the mock turtle nine the next and so on what a curious plan exclaimed alice that's the reason they are called lessons griffin remarked because they lesson from day to day this was quite a new idea to alice and she thought it over a little before she made her next remark then the eleventh day must have been a holiday of course it was said the mock turtle and how did you manage on the on the twelfth alice went on eagerly that's enough about lessons the griffin interrupted in a very decided tone tell her something about the games now now come to the exercises a questions question number 1 is what rules did alice discover about different foods and their effect on people answer is alice discovered a few rules about food she discovered that using pepper in their meals made people hot tempered also that it was vinegar which made people sour and chamomile made them bitter lastly it was things like barley sugar that made children sweet question number 2 what was the duchess theory about morals answer is the duchess theory about morals was that everything has got a moral and that it is only a matter of finding it question number 3 how did the duchess manner change before the queen answer is the duchess manner changed immediately her voice died away and she began to tremble question number 4 what kind of person was the queen answer the queen was a furious and savage lady she was hot tempered and everyone was scared of her question number 5 what was so funny about the mock turtle's account of its schooling answer is many things were funny about the mock turtle's account of its schooling firstly his master was an old turtle but he was still called tortoise also his extra subjects included washing though his school was at the bottom of the sea other subjects were reading writing geography drawing and mystery all parodies of real school subjects another funny thing was that their lessons would lessen with each passing day b language one look carefully at the speech of a the duchess b alice c the griffin and d the mock turtle one in what way is the speech different b what does the speech tell us about each character we will discuss them one by one a the duchess her speech is full of proverbs which she calls morals and uses in appropriately number 2 her speech tells us that she is a chatty and talkative person trying to please alice also her knowledge of the world is very limited she misuses proverbs and does not know what mustard actually is a vegetable or a bird however she is proud of her wisdom next alice her speech is proper polite and free of errors number 2 Her speech tells us that she is courteous, friendly, 
and well mannered. Also, she asks a lot of questions which reflect her curiosity. She seems to belong to a well educated upper class family, being around well mannered people who do not order her around. Also, she can be quite assertive at times as she claims she has a right to think. The Gryphon. The Gryphon. Its speech is full of errors and also full of wordplay. Number two, its speech tells us that it is not well educated, though it knows its manners well. It can be a bit impolite at times, but is mostly friendly towards Alice. Now comes to the mock turtle. Its speech is mostly melancholic. Number two, its speech tells us that the mock turtle is friendly towards Alice, but is also extremely sentimental and self-absorbed. It constantly sobs and cries. Two, what do you think the mock turtle means by ambition, distraction, uglification, and derision? Answer is the mock turtle means addition by ambition, subtraction by distraction, multiplication by uglification, and deviation by derision. Three, give the intended word for those in italics the mock turtle replied counting off the subjects on his on his flappers mystery ancient and modern with seography then drawing the master taught us drawing stretching and fainting in quiles. He taught laughing and grief. Answer is the mock turtle replied, counting of the subjects on his flappers, history, ancient and modern, with seography, then drawing. The master taught us drawing, sketching, and painting in oils. He taught Latin and Greek. Four. The griffon makes some mistakes in his speech. What are they? A. It's all her fancy that they never executes nobody you know. Here the mistake is, it's all her fancy that they never execute anybody you know. B. This here young lady said the griffon, she wants for to know your history, she do. Here, this young lady here said the griffon, she wants to know your history, she does. Number five, can you put the following into simple English? Never imagine yourself not to be otherwise than what it might appear to others, that what you were or might have been was not otherwise than what you had been would have appeared to them to be otherwise. Students here you can write the answer or you can um, you can tell that do not make pretenses. Six. Now try to make sense of this by putting in the correct punctuation he said that 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 woman said out to have been which he said that 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 woman said out to have been which mm -hmm. here you have to put inverted commas around that and around which see words and meaning there are hundreds of homophones and homonyms in English and these give rise to many puns. A pun is a figurate, 
figure of speech that may be defined as a play on words having a similar sound but different meanings. Um, here, for example, question is life worth living? A, it depends on the liver. Here the play upon the homo uh, homonyms liver, meaning ones who lives and be the glandular organ in the body. Can you find some puns in the story? The answer is that's the reason they are called lessons. The griffon remarked because they lesson from day to day. We called him tortoise because he taught us, said the mock turtle angrily. Thanks for watching and listening. If you like my videos, please like and share it, and do not forget to subscribe my channel.